As we mentioned in the last lecture, we are going to be going over the scrum term matching answer key throughout this lecture. So in the previous lecture, as well as on here, there is a resource attached with the scrum term matching answer key. What we're recommending is that you compare your results to that answer key and then watch this lecture where we'll walk through and clear up any confusion that you have. So we'll give you two seconds here to stop the video in case you haven't completed the matching or haven't compared your answers to the answer key. So what we're going to do is work through these one at a time, starting with the top. So the first one is, is a time box a specific set of time? As we look through the terms, the term that fits here best is sprint. Sprint is an example of a time box. A time box is really something that has a set start and an end. It's a box of time that things are happening in. And a sprint is a perfect example of that. The sprint is one to four weeks, and that is where all the work is being done. And at the end of that sprint, we have that potentially shippable product increment or piece of the product that's ready to go. Next one is value. This is a value. Do the right thing and work on tough problems. And this is courage. This is one of the scrum values that you need to be courageous enough to be doing the right thing, calling people out on questions or concerns that you have and make sure you're attacking those tough problems. Don't just go after all of the easy tasks Tackle those tough problems, get them resolved, and get moving forward. Next is user story contains enough details to be worked. This is the definition of ready. It's the definition of ready because that user story has enough details that it's now ready to be worked. Up next is a vertical slice of a potentially shippable product. This is a product increment, and this is really what sets Agile apart from other methodologies. Instead of waiting till the end to deliver value, Agile is delivering product increments after every sprint and is able to then give that value and show that value to the users at that time. So a vertical slice, always think of product increment. Next is a visual aid that shows trending of user stories completed. This would be a burn down chart because this is user a trending of user stories that are completed. That's our typical burn down. So we can see how we're working towards getting done with those stories that we've committed to for that particular sprint. Next is share lessons learned from the previous iteration. And this is the sprint retrospective. This is you're looking back at that sprint and you're sharing your idea of how things went. Next is a servant leader that removes roadblocks. The key thing here is servant leader, and that is the scrum master. That scrum master is not a project manager. They're not there to dictate and drive that project forward. They're there to serve the team and remove those roadblocks and those impediments so people can continue to move forward on the tasks that they're assigned. Next is the second scrum value, and this is complete the right work based on sprint goals, and that is focus. You want to focus on the user stories that are going to bring you towards your sprint goals. Ultimately, meeting your sprint goals over and over and over will help you meet those project goals, so it's important to be focused. Meeting to demo progress made during the iteration. This is a sprint review. This is you're reviewing what you did. You're doing a demo. You're reviewing what the team was able to accomplish within that particular sprint. A simple description of a feature from a user's perspective is a user story. A user story helps to explain what that user needs from their eyes, and it helps to give some context to the person that's actually creating the solution. Next is committed user stories for an upcoming iteration. This is the sprint backlog. That sprint backlog is a subset of our product backlog. Product backlog contains all of our user stories. The sprint backlog is that subset that we pull out and commit to for that particular sprint. Tasked with understanding the product vision. This is the product owner. The product owner is working with the business, understanding the vision of the product and helping to portray that vision to the project team to make sure that they're moving forward in the right direction. Discussion and commitment for the next iterations work. Well, we know during this meeting, we're creating that sprint backlog. We're committing to those stories and we commit to those stories as part of the sprint planning meeting. 
that sprint planning meetings where we're getting together right at the end usually of the previous sprint and planning out our next sprint. We come up to our third scrum value, treat everyone as a capable team member. And this is respect. All team members are chipping in and doing things that sometimes are a little out of their comfort zone. And so you need to make sure that you're treating everyone with respect and as if they're a capable team member. Next is a prioritized list of user stories that grows and changes. And this is the product backlog. The key things here is a prioritized list, the highest priority items are at the top, and that it's going to grow and change as the project goes on. That's the point of being agile. We need to be able to adapt to new user stories and take in new user stories as well as adjust current user stories that are in that product backlog that need to be adjusted to help meet the needs of the business. Next is a common understanding of when something is complete. That is the definition of done. This is the team coming to an agreement as to when something is complete. Discussion of yesterday's progress, today's plan, and issues. This is the daily stand-up. It's a daily meeting where you're discussing what did you accomplish yesterday, what are you working on today, and what type of roadblocks, impediments, or issues are you having. Next is a team-created list of rules, expectations, and procedures. This is a working agreement, and this is kind of like a rule set for the team. Since the team is going to be collaborating on all these various stories and through these various sprints, it's important to set those expectations up front as to what is expected of the team. The fourth scrum value that we're covering is discuss the work and challenges of the project. This is openness, being able to be open and really think critically both of what you've done, the work that you've done within that particular sprint or project, and also being open with other people as to the work that they've done, how we can improve. Remember, we're a big collaborative team and we're not pointing fingers. We're just trying to help ensure that everybody is doing their part in making sure that this project will end successfully. Self-organizing cross-functional group of people. This is the dev team. This is the group of people that are actually doing the work. This is your business analysts, your developers, any solutioners, designers, quality assurance members, etc. Compares total user stories versus completed user stories. This is a burn up chart. The biggest difference here is you're comparing the completed stories versus those total stories. Because that total could always change and continue to rise or fall, the burn-up chart does a better job than the burn-down chart of giving us a picture of where we're actually at versus the work that needs to be completed. Number of story points that are completed per iteration. This is the team's velocity. This is how many story points they're actually able to get through in design, solution, test, and have ready for release at the end of that sprint. This helps you to plan your future sprints when you have an understanding of what your velocity has been on previous sprints. Another scrum value, give 100% effort to achieve the project team's goals. This is commitment. Be committed to the team. Really try hard. Everybody's working together to make this happen, and you need to be committed to make sure that the team is successful. And lastly, work that is currently being completed. Well, that's obviously work in progress. So I hope this Scrum Term document helped you to answer any of those underlying questions or clear up any confusion that you had. This will really help you solidify some of the definitions of these terms.